here with Brad Coons from Top Shelf Mushrooms, and uh, you're in Meaford, Ontario now. Yes. Uh, last time I was here a year ago, I was working on your farm in Collingwood. That's right. So maybe you can let everyone know kind of why you made the big move and why Meaford. Sure. Uh, well, this is my third location. So my first location was in a farmer's field, and I uh, leased that property from uh, a friend of mine. And then when I wanted to get bigger, it really wasn't suitable. So I went to uh, partnered up with somebody and used their warehouse and had tons of space. But um, in the end, the rent and the obligations were really not suitable. And the partner really wanted to do something else with his building. So I said, you know what, if my third, if this is going to be my last location. I want to own the land, uh, get it set up exactly how I want it and uh, reboot my farm. Um, and capture on the successes that we had and then conquer the challenges we were facing while we were running. Because sometimes it's a lot easier to fix a problem when you're not running than when you're operational. So, so are you, are you going to be running the same style of business? No, I'm actually, it's a good question. I've, I've decided to change my business a little bit. I'm still going to be growing uh, in summer and year round, but not focusing as much on growing as I am producing blocks for other farms because they've kind of surfaced. Uh, and interested in growing blocks and they're not interested in learning all the things it takes to make your own spawn and to make your own blocks and the lab work and stuff which is a it's difficult for people just starting out to learn all that so it's a lot easier for people to start out and just grow blocks so that's what I'm going to focus on because that's what the market's telling me. And, and uh, you're even getting into working on uh, specialized equipment for small-scale mushroom farming maybe you could kind of get into detail of what you're working on really quick and kind of maybe a few projects that you kind of have uh, kind of in the back of your mind. Sure. Um, well, my background is I'm an electrical engineer by training, a degree, and I've been in uh, software for the past 20 something years. So, and then I got into mushrooms and I thought, well, how do I combine all those three? So I've designed a system that is completely controlled by a computer that uh, it adds dry materials at a measured amount using scales and um, it's precise, it's repeatable, it's fast and it allows me to be a one-man operation without having to hire a lot of extra staff. So I really saw it as a problem that I was having because sometimes I would have people helping me and they just wouldn't show up or they weren't reliable or I was constantly training new people and I thought well if I can eliminate the need to have that person that'll save me money and it'll save me frustration as well. So this this is the auto bagging robot that you're you're referring to, and I'll I'll leave a link uh, above where you guys can view that video. Uh, is there any other uh, projects that you think uh, you might have uh, some expertise in designing in the future? Yeah, I've been working for a few farms and um, that are pretty far away. Actually, one's in in Portland, Oregon, and another one's in uh, Missouri, and uh, some in here in Canada as well. And they're looking to me for taking my engineering background to get them set up with an efficient operation. And um, so they're starting from scratch. They need a lot of advice. So that's something I love doing. I love explaining things and helping people. And uh, so I definitely welcome inquiries. So you're, you're, getting, uh, you're getting into consulting quite a lot recently. Yeah, exactly. Especially when my farm was downtime. I've, I've, I don't have the, the, the daily burden of... of running everything so i've actually had a little bit more time to be able to do that and i think like one of the the bigger advantages is that you've designed a shipping container grow room and you really have some expertise in, uh, in how to design that and that's that's a lot of uh what your consulting has been focused on specialized in mushroom cultivation yeah exactly it's um shipping containers are hot uh whether it's in architecture or repurposing for all kinds of different applications um, and that's how I started my mushroom farm was in a, in a shipping container and then we grew to four containers so and I still have two um, and I'm probably gonna be adding a few more when I do get back to actually full-time growing uh, depending on what the market tells me uh, in my area but uh, yeah so I've actually helped people one farm is setting up nine containers um, in parallel um, so they're using some of the experience that I learned with modifying containers, how do you cut into them, how do you support the roof, because the roof is only really rated for one or two people, so if you want to hang anything from it, it's all kinds of challenges that, that I've already sort of faced, problems I've had, and solutions I've come up with that, that are helpful to other people, so they don't, they don't waste a lot of money. So do you see that uh, your farm might be more like a model farm of kind of testing 
your 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 container unit and equipment and kind of maybe grow small scale but more focus heavily on con consultations and equipment design yeah yeah i definitely see that as being a possible future i mean er everything can change but it certainly seems to be something that small farmer especially with rising minimum wage and other issues that are facing small farms it's uh you know trying to compete with big firms, automation really helps. And but you, automation is usually out of reach for a small farmer. So I really think there's an opportunity there to try to take how I'm solving my own problems just because I have an aptitude that's not common uh, with software and engineering and say, let me design something for myself that I think other people could use. And um, we'll see how it goes. So, so no partners now, and nope. you're on 20 acres here? Yep, 20 acres. And you can get as big or as small as you want, do whatever hours you want, and, and you live right here. Exactly. It's a very different equation from my last farm. That's, that's to me, is, is the best way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah rent, rent is for uh, suckers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm perfectly happy, you know, working out of my house. Well, we have two houses here, so one's a, a really large workshop that lets me sort of uh, spread out but additionally the containers outside are kind of modular additions that I can call somebody up and one can show up that week and we can start adding it like a Lego brick. Well Brad I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, the direction you're headed. I think uh, it's, it's really important to diversify and innovate in this space and use the the talents that you have to kind of to kind of be your own your own businessman and I really I really think you have some awesome stuff to offer for this industry and I think uh, there's going to be some really cool stuff that we can work together in the future. I totally agree and I appreciate the, uh, the kudos. Thanks. Anyways Brad, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>